In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up Auto GPT. You'll be able to follow along with me step by step so you can set up the autonomous GPT and really take your AI writing to the next level. All the links I use, you'll be able to find in the description of this video. And be sure to check out my AI course, teaches you how to be an expert with ChatGPT. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them below. I tend to reply within a few hours. And if you can drop a like on this video, it'll be hugely appreciated. First thing we're going to do is prepare our computer. So we're going to right click on our desktop, click new, and then folder. And let's call this AI. Now head over to python.org slash downloads and click download. Once this is downloaded, click the downloaded file and make sure you select the addpython.exe to path then do install. Next, head over to gitforwindows.org and then click the download button. It's downloaded, click on the downloaded file and now just follow every step until you get to the install button and then do install. The next step is to go to this URL and again, the link will be in the description because now it's time to actually install AutoGPT. Once you're on this page, go ahead and scroll until you get to the installation part. This will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to install AutoGPT. But don't worry because we're gonna be doing this together. So the first step is go ahead and click this copy button and this will copy this command. Minimize your browser and head over to the folder that we created. Once inside, click on the search bar and type in CMD and then enter. Your command prompt should open and on your keyboard, press Control and V and that should paste that command. Then press enter. Once it's finished installing, you'll then see this. And we know it's installed because if we move it over, we now have a new folder inside the folder we created. And if we open that up, we've got all of those files. I'm going to close this command prompt and head back over to the website. And the next step is to copy this command. Inside the second folder, which is this one, again in the search bar, type in CMD, enter, and then paste in that command and press enter. Depending on the speed of your computer, this will take up to a few minutes. Now that it's been installed, we're going to go ahead and close the command prompt. Inside your folder, you want to find a file called .env.template. Now go to your search icon in Windows and type in Notepad. Open it up and now drag that file into the notepad. This document looks a little bit intimidating, but don't worry because I'm gonna walk you through it all. So the first thing that we need is our OpenAI API key. This will give us a direct connection with OpenAI so we can actually use GPT. Now you want to head over to platform.openai.com and log into your account. If you've not got an account, you will have to create one. Another thing that you'll need to do is add your billing details inside the payment method area. If you've not added your bank card, you won't be able to use the connection, which means you won't be able to use GPT. Once you've added your bank details, head over to API keys, and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new key. Name it whatever you want. I'm just going to do auto GPT, and I'm going to do create secret key. Just so you know, this key will be deleted straight after this video, but I do recommend never to share your secret key with anyone else, because once they do, they can start using your account and you will start getting charged for it. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the key, head over to the text file, and where it says open AI key, you want to highlight everything after the equal sign and paste your key in and just press Control and S to save the document. Next, if we scroll down, we want to add Pinecone details. If you head over to pinecone.io and click sign up for free, you will need to then create an account. But one important thing is if you use a normal email address like Gmail or Hotmail, the chances are you'll be placed on to a waiting list. A little pro tip is to purchase a domain name, I'll leave a link in the description for you, which has some sort of business theme to it, and then use a domain email to create an account. And that should nine out of 10 times give you instant access. Just to give you an example, this is an example of a personal email address, and this is an example of a domain email address. The difference is the domain is something you own, versus Gmail is something you're kind of renting from. Once you're inside your Pinecone account, go ahead and click API keys, and you'll want to copy your Pinecone API just by clicking the copy key value. Head back to your document, and where it says Pinecone API key, after the equal sign, paste in your key. Once again, I'll be removing this API key from my system, so I'd recommend just using your own. Next, you want to copy the environment, so just copy this little bit here, and under the API key, where it says pinecone underscore 
EMV after the equal sign paste in that text and now you can press save and now we can exit out of this document the next step is we need to rename this document here so we're going to copy and then paste it into our folder now that we've got the copied template we can right click and click rename and we're just going to take away everything after the v and then do enter and you're going to want to say yes. And now that's been renamed. The final step is now to actually see if AutoGPT will work for us. And if it does work for you first time, make sure to let me know in the comments and also like this video. Let's see if it all works. So going back to GitHub, if we scroll down, we now have this command here. So we're going to copy it, go to our folder and inside the search bar again, type in CMD and we're going to paste in that command and press enter. And it's working. So let's go ahead and have some fun and see how it all works. So we're going to give it an AI name. I'm just going to call this foodie. And we're going to say it's a food blogger. Now you want to describe the role. So the role of this is an AI designed to find the most trending food topics online with the sole goal of showing me trends in the current market and now you want to give it five goals you don't need to do all five goals so let's see what we come up with so goal one is research trending food topics find trending videos about food display a list of the best topics to create content about from the research in goal one and two and that's really all the goals that I actually need so all you need to do is press enter and then enter again and now it's doing its thing so at this point you might be like well what is actually auto GPT I've got it set up it's all working it's all really cool but how what's the point of it and how is this different from let's say chat GPT or GPT4 well to put it simply it's all basically the same sort of thing it's all run on the same sort of thing but the difference here is that one auto GPT can actually run without you. You can tell it how many times you want it to run or you can leave it running in continuous mode, which means that if you had yourself a virtual private server or a computer that's in the cloud, you could actually in theory have this problem solving for you 24 seven. So you don't need to manually input any more prompts. Auto GPT actually talks to itself. It goes through all the rationale and it decides what's the best route of action. Pretty scary, isn't it? But we are entering into the future. Let's head back to my screen and see what sort of output we've just got. So the thought of GPT says, I think I should start by researching trending food topics online. And then it's giving it itself some rationale. This will give me an idea of what people are currently interested in and what topics I should focus on for my content. And then it creates a plan of action, which is use the Google command to search for trending food topics. In other words, it's just going to search on Google for trending topics. Then it's saying save the results to a file for future reference. That basically is going to be saving a file for us so we can check it out. And then it's giving itself some criticism. So it's saying I need to make sure that I'm using reliable sources for my research and not just relying on clickbait articles. Crazy, isn't it? but basically mimicking the human mind, but much more structured. At the moment, every single time it says something, it then needs us to confirm if we want it to keep on running or it act on the next command. So if I say why, I'm just going to do enter and that means yes. So I've just approved the command and now it's doing its thing. So it's just found a bunch of information, but it's now saying it wants to use the browse website command to visit more websites in the search results. So check this out. If I press Y again and enter, it's actually just opened up a web browser. It's going to a website it thinks is relevant and it's analyzing the page all without me. And now it's logging all the information on the page. It's making sense of it so it can give me better feedback. It really is like having your own personal assistant doing work for you whilst you're out doing other things. Now, one final tip for you before we leave, if you wanted it to just 
run a certain amount of prompts over and over so you don't need to keep on approving every single thing well all you'll do is press y and then the dash symbol and then say the number of how many times you want it to run and it will do just that then press enter and now it's going to continuously run for the next 10 commands and then after 10 commands, you'll have to reapprove it. But you can do this 100 or 1,000 times. Inside your OpenAI account, where you've got the API key, if you go over to usage, you'll actually be able to see how much this is all going to be costing you. And we're actually talking about very small amounts of money. You should be aware of how much it's generating for you. Yesterday, I had a massive day where I was just really pulling this to the test, and that cost me about 10 but that was about six to seven hours of pure usage. So we're talking about well over 100 words being generated. So it's very cheap. Now, one last thing, if you want to stop the software in its track, inside the command prompt, if you press Control and C, it will stop it in its track. Let me know your thoughts or if you've got any issues using this or the setup, and I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.